So I'm I'm from California, um, living right. just north of Sacramento, and I had a music business oh. class, and our professor. That's wanted, right. Yeah, he wanted us to reach out to musicians or management, anything like that, um, to kind of cool. talk about their experience in the music industry and cool. um, any tips or ideas and. You know, just kind of anything you want to talk about, really. And I have like six oh, right. sort of talking points, and then um, there's some questions after, which most of them are actually related to Coldplay. And um, well, I ask some people if they the, have any questions. So uh, that's yeah. the calling card, I suppose. You know? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't talk. Uh, we wouldn't <laughs> no, I, I be wouldn't. here. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so, anyway, nice to meet you. Nice, nice very to meet nice you. To meet you Thanks too. for asking, and hope, hope I can help. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Right. Um, so first, mm -hmm. I figured I'd start off with um, just say your name and then your general background mm -hmm. info, um, just okay. whatever you want to talk about in general. Cool. All right. Should I just go? Uh, well, yeah. um, I am. Uh, well, my name is Davide Rossi. I'm uh, I and I have um, uh, being a violinist all my life, I started in Italy. That's where I'm from, Turin. And um, in Italy, you go, <clears throat> you start with at the conservatory, which you also have in the United <clears throat> States. Mm -hmm. But you start in Italy, it's kind of a different school system. You start um, in your primary school. Okay. So you start when you're, sorry, secondary school. I'm so sorry. So what you call junior high, okay. correct? Gotcha. So, yeah. That's where we start. I, I, so basically, I did. Um, I was playing the violin privately before. I was. I learned it privately, and then I got an exam to get to the conservatory, and I got in. And then, throughout, you know, junior high, college, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yeah. is that you do study at the conservatory in complement, complementary with your normal education. That gotcha. makes sense. Okay. So that's my studying background and then of course that uh, led to doing masters and um, you know the, then i got my diploma and then i kept working and studying right um i also studied with um i did some master classes with um, other musicians and um, outside the violin um okay. because i was interested in other things than just violin per se right um so i was um i studied <clears throat> for a long time with robert fripp who was the guitarist of a band called king crimson oh yeah um, okay. really famous uh, uh progressive band from the 70s the late 60s 70s onwards right. and robert was doing um some courses like um, um worldwide Right. Germany, US, and and so I went to attend a few of them. Um, uh, that was very important for me in terms of education. I it was like he work, you know, he is like he was like a rock musician, but mm -hmm. using the same kind of approach as disciplined as a classical musician. So you know, you know, you know, I come from the a place of practicing and being very disciplined about my playing, right. and then because I also loved to do other music, mostly like, you know, pop music, rock music. I was already in bands mm -hmm. when I was, since I was 50 or so. But then um, studying with Robert was great to do, using that kind of rock, pop approach in a more disciplined way. Then I also went to a few courses with Karin Stockhausen, it was like, a, Composer, I don't know if you're familiar with that name. Mm -hmm. um, he used to be well. Caroline Stukasen passed away in the early 2000, uh, I think 2008, if I'm not wrong. And then uh, he was, um, you know, from the school of um, well, he's um, contemporary. Well, he's a man on his own. He's a composer on his own. That was when I was studying composition as well. Right. Okay. So I was very into mm -hmm. his music because i always been very much influenced by the music of zappa and zappa was a big fan of arrays and stockhausen <laughs> this kind of really out there type of yeah mother yeah really like weird <laughs> shit, basically <clears throat> but you know i think i always been like trying to um as much as i love pop music you know 
with all my heart, I always try to I always reach out to find out the boundaries. You know, I right. suppose when you study a lot of when you're into music and you study a lot of it, you get you know you get to know a lot of stuff. Yeah. And um, alternative as also other types of music, which is not just pop per se. So, well, I studied a lot and I was in a lot of bands in Italy. Then I moved to England in 93. And then I went, I lived there and studied there. Well, mostly living there and doing my thing and touring here and there. And then I met um, eventually with a band called Goldfrapp. Mm -hmm. um, which was well it's, it's still going on they were like a pretty big band in England mm -hmm. a little bit we did tour worldwide we came to the United States but mostly did the main cities like LA New York right I don't know uh, you know <laughs> the main we, we never did uh, the three month long uh, Midwest or yeah. you know never did that um, but we we were pretty popular, um, and it's a great band, and, and and that was like my first really sort of break in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, working with a proper band, and then that led me into meeting up with the Coldplay, because we were invited to support their European tour during okay. the X and Y uh, era. Oh, wow. So that what we're talking about autumn 2006 and then we became friends me and Coldplay like you know and then they invited me to to join them in the studio mm -hmm. from 2007 so actually the, right the end of 2006 so in fact the tour the European tour with Coldplay that we supported was the autumn 2005 then 2006 at the end they invited me to join them they were starting literally starting the session that was to become uh, Viva La Vida, which lasted 18 months. Wow. And um, I was supposed to be there for a few days, just to try to things out and then, and then things, uh, they loved it because they were looking for outside influence. Yeah. Um, so, that, so that was kind of the reason when I went there. So that was a pretty big session, 18 months. I was in and out, not all the time, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, but I would spend like, let's say, half of that time I was with them in various London or um, um, New York or wherever we recorded, sometimes in uh, Barcelona a little bit. Um, and then we did. Um, and then after that, I was uh, obviously still touring with golf up and then I met up with uh, Verve, um, uh, which were doing their last album then, which they didn't know it was their last album for. And then I did that album and then toured with them. And then, well, that was mm -hmm. a very busy year for me because I also did a session with a band called Royk Soap, yeah. which I don't know if you're familiar with. They're like, uh, Norwegian electronic band mm -hmm. and then virtually and I also my sort of arranging career before I was more like a session musician sort of session player so I would <laughs> yeah. just do like do you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah. touring going and play at the time I was playing a lot of the electric violin and so on and so forth but the arranging sort of type of work didn't really take over that much but that year started to okay so i started to do more of that type of work and then i worked with susie sue from susie and the banshees like um mm -hmm. she, susie and the banshees is a very cool very popular band from the 80s sort of goth england yeah. uh like the <laughs> cure if you yeah I love so, the cure. Yeah, that kind of, so Robert Smith was the guitarist in using the Banshees for a period of time. Okay. So, okay. you know, basically I started to do a lot of session and a lot of um, arranging session. Mm -hmm. You got a cat there. Right? Yeah, sorry, he's, he's a noisy cat. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. We all have our own. This. And then I, uh, and then I had, um, and then so basically that, you know, more arranging, more bands, mm -hmm. more work. And now... I that sort of developed 
uh, well, obviously, I've been working from with Coldplay ever since, mm -hmm. more or less, um, uh, in every album, and then uh, working with so many other artists, from Neil Diamond to I don't know, uh, One Rep One, One Republic, Republic yeah. uh, or I don't know, The Killers, uh, Snow Patrol all the bands there are lots of artists uh, from pop you know <laughs> i do i mean it's i vary a lot i i i suppose i am the way i work also i work on my own mm -hmm. mostly which for an arranger is pretty unusual because usually you write the notes and then you hire an ensemble you are an orchestra and then you go there and get the recording done and then the way i work I play all the instruments myself, so violin, viola, cello, contrabass, right. and then I multi-track myself. And that's something that I develop over the years, so mm -hmm. I also work with mm -hmm. ensembles, and I love to still, but then this is kind of a niche, and then when we did it with Coldplay, obviously, we started off doing, um, the first actually song we did together was Yes, mm -hmm. love, in that way, yes. where I what I multi-track a lot, and then they thought, that's a great sound. And we were supposed to use, eventually, an orchestra, and then they just dropped it. And then <laughs> that's, we did the Viva La Vida like that. We did um, also, we were working, like stuff that went into the EP, like, uh, you know, Rainy Days. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, lots of that, all the stuff then was just me, you know, playing, a bunch of, um, you know, um, <laughs> whatever you call it, you know, multi-tracking <laughs> myself. And uh, and that's how I do it mostly, you know, with everybody and it seems to work and, and uh, you know, you too, I don't know, there's so many artists that have been working now. Yeah. And, uh, and producers. Um, one of the bulletin points um, that would really apply to us in college is how was the university life or with, like you said, the conservatory and, um, mm. you know, managing, okay, well, I have to do this, you know, I'll have a job or whatever, or if you didn't, or, um, and then combine that with the stress or just the sheer amount of work that you had to do oh, at university. Well, yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah. It was it was difficult. I mean, I was um, <clears throat> so um, well. I guess uh, because when I started, I was like in junior high, so it was a very long process. You know, gotcha. you can imagine you do junior high, and then you do what comes in high in, in the US, what yeah, high school, yeah. and then university, right? Yeah. So yeah. you can just imagine that you go through all that and then on top of it you have a very strict very demanding music um, uh, commitment mm -hmm. so i would do i remember two classes a week for just violin okay. so a couple of hours a week then i will have like music history uh, music harmony uh, contrapuntum uh, you know the various theory and then you know uh, whatever social social uh, aspects of music and and that's basically mostly classical because the conservatory in italy is very traditional okay. very yeah. classical so and it would be like a lot of work on top of the you know math geography art whatever you're doing yeah French or whatever, if you have a foreign language or English for us, you know, yeah. in Italy. Um, so it was very stressful and very demanding and very, uh, I mean, it was, uh, and it was in various stages. I, uh, you know, it's like every other studying career. You have, I, sus I suppose, I remember having really good years and really bad ones, you know. Yeah. The, the conservatory also, in Italy, it gives, um, so it's it's state, mm -hmm. so it's not private. So that means that you pay a very, I remember at the time, the tax you paid to for the whole year was very minimum. Oh, wow, okay. 
literally like 50 bucks a year crazy you know compared to what you compared to what you guys go through yeah. insanely impossible to think of very high education but the problem is every year you have two exams okay so so you have an exam at the middle of the year and an exam at the end of the year and there are exams that if you make it or break it so you stay in the school or you're out okay yeah so it's quite stressful <laughs> every year is like that so twice a year so you have to be on top of it uh and have um for normal studies let's say that you have to be sufficient which i don't know what is but for music studies to be there you have to be like so let's say we went from zero to ten and you have to be on the eight mark at least right otherwise you're out yeah so it was kind of a bit stressful to say the least and yeah so i have good memories and not so good memories <laughs> also because um obviously the way i work is very creative mm -hmm. It's not the soloist type of work, even though I wanted to become like, you know, a classical violinist. Right. But it was, it's very demanding, very sort of um, uh, almost athletic, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. The practice level is so hard and you have to keep a really high standard of playing. Yeah. And I was more like the creative type. So... Um, I, I kind of forget what I was going to say, but I, su I suppose that I had difficulties with the academic demands yeah, of the actual classical training. Right. Right? Right. Yeah. That's it, me, though. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of the but same it, way, yeah. In retrospect, I, I really... I have to say for the violin especially point of view, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. So I'm grateful for the technical, you know, uh, sort of uh, training I had. Plus I had a good teacher, um, which I kept studying with after uh, yeah. the years of yeah. school. I kept doing private work with him so it was good I'm kind of you know i was on the same boat where you know i started in elementary school and i never really took music so seriously because I, I just didn't know what i wanted to do of course i'm in elementary school then middle school so started with the violin kind of cycled through all the orchestral instruments and eventually stuck with the viola and kind of went on um to go in the marching band to do keyboard and all that so for you like you said you stuck with the violin right for a while and then eventually started learning uh more instruments and what i mean what really came about that you were like okay let me learn every other instrument let me learn the cello the double bass well and... well actually the violin <laughs> is a very tough instrument i stuck with the violin pretty much all my life yeah and i kept that going for a long time i think uh, because I wanted to play in bands since I was 15, I always wanted to, I mean, actually, because also you do other instruments mm -hmm. in the classical education. So you have uh, pl piano, uh, complementary right. studies, you have piano, you have viola. So they already teach you some extra instruments there. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, so you have, you know, so I was like playing in bands with keyboards and so on and so forth. But the violin was my instrument and I suppose I always loved the guitar and stuff. So I, I, I kind of used the violin and got myself some gear to play it electrically, like with bands. Okay. That was my approach okay. rather than change an instrument, you know. Gotcha. Um, and actually mm -hmm. the, the cello is only after I, because then I had a violin, electric violin, which had the, the it was kind of a bass violin. So yeah. I could do the cello and the bass. And then I only learned to play the acoustic one much later, like really late, like a few years ago. Okay. okay you know, gotcha. so now I have the whole orchestra as an acoustic, but it's only kind of a recent thing. Like, I think I started in 2012 to learn okay. that kind of stuff. So it's kind of that developed with um, being more in demand as an arranger and artists 
wanting to have that sound that I do, but with the uh, acoustic, more right. traditional. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. I, so I'm kind of like constantly adapting. Mm -hmm. And I always been mm -hmm. very, I mean, you know, with music, I kind of always wanted to do music, but it's never guaranteed that you can do it as a job. So yeah. I, I was lucky, but I always was able to make a living with it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and he always taking different stages, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, uh, I suppose a lot I stuck a lot with. I mean, it takes a lot of work, you know. I, I was practice mm -hmm. like hell, and you know, <laughs> yeah, just I... like a lot of work. I mean, and then obviously yeah. now I recorded everything myself, so there is all the technology learning learning curve you know so now basically i'm uh, producing as well yeah. you know because i record myself i mix myself like <clears throat> like an example of it like the last coldplay album mm -hmm. um, the first song yes. is yeah. sunrise yeah. that's actually is the first time that happened with them that i play everything myself that was okay. supposed to be a song with Chris playing the piano, maybe the band coming later, singing like we usually, whatever, you know. <laughs> and this time they just kept it like every, and I did everything. So I got credited, not just as of writing and performing, but also as like engineering, mixing the all. Uh, that was, that's what I do now, you know, basically. Yeah. It's, wow. Is... You know, so, so you see, you start with an instrument practicing the violin and learning and then you can develop you know yeah. to i don't know where but you know i'm i'm gonna be 50 this year so you know yeah so you gotta <laughs> it takes time it takes time you know yeah some people start very early mm -hmm. like jacob collier who also is um collaborates uh with coldplay he collaborated in a couple of songs okay. with the last album Jacob Collier is an English and he's yeah. like he's more like a child prodigy he's, yeah. he's doing what I'm doing but he's like 23 yeah he, he's, you he's know on I mean? another level I mean he <laughs> well he, he's just I guess the way he learned is different time yeah. you know I was I took more like the traditional conservatory academic he just was uh, his mom is on, is already a, a music teacher a violinist yeah. and he just he has computers since he's probably like a, a, a toddler <laughs> two, and two years old you know <laughs> exactly you know that's the way it goes you know yeah wow yeah, yeah. um so another question is um the difference from really working with you know big name artists right like Coldplay or the verb um compared to smaller projects whether they're solo projects or um i mean not ne not necessarily smaller but you know just i know what you mean yeah well smaller you know okay well um yeah there is no really that much of a difference to oh, be honest right. the only thing is the commitment and um way you work mm -hmm. i think with coldplay also it changed dramatically because at the beginning i was in the studio every day mm -hmm because it was i wasn't as savvy with uh, technology myself mm -hmm. uh, i didn't have really great machinery to work with yeah. nowadays i have pretty much also with the development with interface and you know audio to digital interface and computers nowadays the power of um, what you can have in the home at home it's incredible yeah like you can do really a record on the box at home which is like competitive to a big studio yeah yeah it is what it is like that but <laughs> when i started actually it wasn't like that mm -hmm. it was not uh, you need to you needed to have an engineer to record you so with coldplay i had an engineer for just myself mm -hmm. and then i learned actually to do it on my own since right so and then even when I started, the technology wasn't that great. And we're talking about early 2000, right. mid 2000. So 
the 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 change i mean the improvement is just uh, it's outstanding you know yeah. of the gear that you can use and make it sound like proper right. um, really professional um so i can't remember so i think nowadays when i have to work on a smaller band sometimes it's like um a real a artist that is just doing it on his own and he doesn't have a budget mm -hmm. and then maybe i like it and maybe i decide okay i'll help you out mm -hmm. and then and then we do and usually they come out with some really good recordings mm -hmm. and then i i take it and and then i work on it and i send it back i work remotely right okay most of the time so even when i work with Cope and i go to chris's studio i i go to my room <laughs> and then i work on my own and then i and then we listen together okay. he will work he will work on his ideas the band will work on his uh, in another space and we all come together and we play each other's stuff yeah so even then it's remote if right. you know what i mean unless yeah. you jam unless you do a jam together which these days is less and less with them at least it doesn't happen very much mm -hmm. with viva it happened a lot milo xyloto also quite a bit mm -hmm. um in uh, then ghost stories almost nothing uh can't even remember the one after what is that I called dreams. thank you yeah. also that <laughs> nothing and this one also, the, the sunrise. Well, so what happens is that Chris moved to LA mm -hmm. in uh, after Milo Zyloto. He moved to LA, and I go a place in uh, in Long Beach actually. So I go in and out, and then we usually do stuff. Um, you know, we have session me and him. Yeah. So. And uh, and uh, but still, it's very short. So we go, we exchange some ideas, and then I go in my own room and I do develop this. It you know we we've been working together for a long time, so he, yeah. he kind of trusts me the way I work yeah. in Copenhagen. By the way, I usually uh, we are on a lockdown, but it's a lot less strict because they close the borders mm -hmm. a lot earlier. And uh, so the virus didn't spread as much, but still all schools are closed. And, uh, yeah. um, you know, it's very, you have to be careful, but it's not as strict because uh, fortunately the government was very strict at the beginning. Yeah. So just so you know, okay. I'm not just uh, not caring about the <laughs> no, virus. No, I know. It's very important. It's very, yeah. you know, there you go. Yeah, and that, you know, that kind of brings me to the last question actually is, how do you how do you make it on your own is no matter what life throws at you so like right now you have the virus this is a tough time for really any musician and, i know uh, yeah, yeah very much so well i am in a very lucky position that i've been uh, social distancing for the last <laughs> 10 years <laughs> yeah i really my work it's myself in a room on my own with very little contact. The, the contact is through mail, email, mm -hmm. or what we do, like uh, with an artist, we talk about it. Uh, but uh, very often it's just an email with a briefing. That's what we want, that's what we like. And I do my thing, send it over. They say, great, great, can you do something else? Sometimes we do a jam, sometimes if you have that, but that's more like a luxury, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very much i feel like this time for me uh that is happening all over the planet i feel like i don't feel so much on my own anymore because yeah. i can feel like everyone is doing what i'm doing but in a matter as a matter of speaking um it's funny i have to say it's almost like i've been preparing for something like this uh <laughs> because i well to in truthfulness obviously um, um, if things keep going like this, um, obviously everyone is going to have a knock on effect, you know what I mean? But I feel at the same time that, um, it's, um, 
what what is happening is that this is kind of the future. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a as a matter of fact, you know, at least for for my, for example, my kids they do school uh, online now. Mm-hmm. They, you know, some lessons can be done like uh, FaceTiming with the class. Yeah. I mean, for my daughter, she goes to university uh, to um, to high school, and that's what she's doing. My son is getting you know <laughs> homework via email. You know, is sorry, is he coming or not? Okay, so basically, um, you know, that's what's going on. Um, and I'm driving, but I'm looking at the road. <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> so, so ba- but basically what I'm saying is that um, um, uh, I can't remember what to say. Well, yeah, basically, to me, this is kind of the future. Mm-hmm. There is definitely when people say, well, you lose the human contact. I do agree and I do not. It really depends how you do it. Yeah. For instance, now I, I've done a project, my own project. Usually I work for other people, but now I just done a project. Mm-hmm. And I hope you don't mind. I just talk about my music. Oh, please, um, please. It's called uh, Soren Lawrenson, and it's a band I did together with a guy called Matt Hales. Aqualong, are you familiar with his name? Kind of in the early 2000 anyway hmm. it's like a project we have soren lawrence and, and uh, we did almost everything remotely mm-hmm. and it's and it's, it just took a long time because we are both busy producers that's right it. right and that's the thing you, but you yeah oh sorry sorry continue. no no you can work obviously uh, if you have to do live music this will be complicated yeah <laughs> yeah you know you... and kind of boring although although I've seen nowadays people, these forced people to do like almost live shows mm-hmm. and uh, playing together, you know. So, um, that, you're not, what are you talking every about? Morning, every morning in Denmark, somebody in live. Yeah, it's true, exactly. And everybody, the, the, my son is uh, taking. <laughs> okay, so basically, yeah. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's possible, but obviously you cannot replace. I think the live show. I mean, of course there is VR and all that kind of stuff. Probably is gonna play. Well, Coldplay did that with the last album. Mm-hmm. They did that in Jordan mm-hmm. as a, as an example. Mm-hmm. They before this whole thing happened, they they didn't want to do. They their 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 sort of their object was to not tour until they find a way to do it so that it doesn't have such an impact on the environment. Yeah. Environmental crisis. Yeah. You know, whether you acknowledge it or not, it's it's a fact. And I think this virus, it's probably not completely related to the environment, but maybe in a, in a way it is. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's important to find alternative ways of working. I think after this, probably a lot of people will find out that uh, they learn to work from home and uh, it's a plus on it. You know, you can be more efficient in a way. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are, a lot of businesses are starting to do the work from home thing, even before the virus. Like my mom, she's been working from home for a year. Exactly. She finds it to be more productive. A lot of people do. And it's, you know, because you're in the comfort of your own home. You're not in some place that might be a yeah, little stuffy or... Exactly. Yeah, and sometimes there is the myth. Exactly. There is the myth of, you know, the nine to five. You go to an office, so you concentrate. It's not really... I think when I, when you actually do your hours and you're responsible for... Because it becomes like... Um, you need to... It's more like a productive base mm-hmm. type of work. Right. It's not like hours that you know is not you're not committing to the hours you're committing to the i need to do this and has to be this kind of quality yeah so you know so i have to do a song i have to do and then i have to be able to deliver by a specific date mm-hmm. and has to be quality as to match you know obviously and so it becomes much more on your own shoulder and that's i think that creates a lot more 
quality production, you yeah, know, so to speak. Really. Um, yeah, and, and self responsibility, which I think it's key to having someone just telling you, hey, you're not, uh, you know, in your nose while you're in front of the computer or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. I'm ready for your Coldplay question. Is gotcha. this okay, by the way? Or is oh, it too yeah. noisy? No, no, it's 100% okay, yeah. Okay, good. Cool. Alright, so we got a question here from Scott. Um, he's asking about, well, you kind of went into detail about this earlier, but the recording process of Viva and the relationship that you developed with the band, not, you know, um, especially, you know, Chris or any, anyone like that. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, um, well, the way it was a very, um, so as I said, it was like an 18 month session. And, uh, for me, it was like, let's say, how, I will count half of that time, maybe, yeah, maybe three quarter towards half of the time I spent it with them, mm -hmm. um, because obviously they needed uh, some times of their own, or they will work with other producers or musicians, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I started right at the beginning, so I came in before Branino or John Hopkins, before anybody, because I met them and we were kind of became friends during the tour X and Y mm -hmm. and um, it took I think because the band wasn't used to have so many outsider it took a while to to get used to someone new yeah. I guess that's why they called me before everyone else because we kind of were on a kind of more like a mate sort of friends type of vibe yeah, but you know, yeah. the minute you go in the studio, they were, you know, it's just a different thing. It's very, it becomes very intense and serious. Of, it's an intense, it's, in, it's really serious. I mean, you know, when you say serious work, it's a bit, sounds a little bit stupid, but it kind of is, it's very intense to work in a studio and especially when you work on a big record with a big band I mean it, there is a certain amount of um, energy tension so before the, but it, it was really great straight away that's why I was invited to stay longer mm -hmm. and um, but then the roles were pretty much at the beginning you do this and I try this you know mm -hmm. Yeah. And at the beginning, I was very much mostly with the electric violin, jamming together with mm -hmm. um, with a band. They didn't really know about my sort of skills as a, a composer and arranger yet. And you never really want to push your... You never want to... I mean, it doesn't really work going there and say, yeah, I can do this, I can do that. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. It's very much like you kind of ease yourself into it and they have to they have to get comfortable with you because they have their own routine and their own, their own chemistry. They have to find themselves. Uh, it's very complicated. And then you get a producer and the producer is sort of say, and then it was Brian and he had one say and then Marcus... Marcus Drabs, he had another say, mm -hmm. then you have like other people like John Hopkins, you know, and other people who were there, and, you know, Rick, at the time he was more like an engineer and then he developed to become like one of the producers, you know, Dan, who, Dan Green, who does all the live stuff, he wasn't even, you know, doing anything. And then he, I, he just, sometimes he was at the studio, you know, and then he became, you know, these, there's uh, so much development from them. <laughs> right. Uh, and I think at the time, because they were also like the fourth record and then the third record was a difficult one, mm -hmm. X and Y, when they lost Phil, yeah. Phil Harvey, which is kind of, it's like a fifth member of the band, even though it doesn't really play. Yeah. And because they really missed him so much during that process to having him back, because he was there... I never met him on tour, and suddenly he was there. Hello, my name is Phil. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Who the hell are you? you know? <laughs> and he just turns out he's kind of the boss, you know? 
Yeah. <laughs> but the in a very director, yeah. in a very <laughs> sweet sort of way. But it, you know, everyone at that time was finding himself. Yeah. It really was. Uh, that's why I think that record in particular is really amazing, and it's it's because it, it was such a unique time and nobody really knew who yeah. Rolls was. You know, so for me specifically, I started as a just an extra band member with the electric violin, jamming on ideas, and then solidifying those ideas, going to from the bakery to do sessions, proper session uh, at air studios. And yeah. then suddenly they discover, well, I got this, I, we, Brian Eno was around, so we each one got a day with him in the mm -hmm. studio. Okay. <laughs> a day in the studio with Brian, <laughs> and then and then basically then you start you record stuff with him obviously related to the band's material yeah. and then we recorded his string section with the electric violin on the song rainy days yeah. which then he forgot about it <laughs> being brian and then she, then a month or two later as we are at their studio and say like, well they were really struggling with the song rainy days so I'm like, well, we had this stuff recorded together, me and Brian. Did you play to them? Oh, no, I forgot. I'll bring it tomorrow. And then <laughs> the day after, I come back and it's like, ah, you're going to do the arranging. And then that's what I started to do. Yes. And then we went all, and then we went to New York. And, you know, it's very organic and changing. And, and then uh, I started. For instance, Viva La Vida, which was actually done on the back, on the back end of Rainy Days as a recording, because they yeah. love that rhythm stuff, which is kind of my style. And then they they had this song, Viva, that he just wrote, uh, and then uh, we were trying things, and then when we were in New York recording, I sort of put it down on a riff together with Chris. Yeah. Oh, and then, um, and so that was, the riff was recorded in New York. And then I think after New York, I thought I'd done. Um, and then a couple of months later, they're still on the studio, still working. <laughs> and then, and then he say, well, we have an idea. Can you just do a big arrangement on the back end of the riff? So he gave mm -hmm. me the chords and then I was already, rehearsing with golf for, for the next tour and then i did all the stuff and then he was in america and then i did it and i liked it so he came back to london and then i was we finished it at the bakery wow. and that, that's okay. also when we did 42 so in the span of like 16 18 months it was like a very different and you know and sometimes it goes very slow and sometimes very fast and you know, my Lozilo I was there pretty much the whole time yeah. again. But then everyone had a, a stronger idea what their role was, you know. Yeah, yeah. John Hopkins knew what John Hopkins was going to do. Brian obviously <laughs> knew. Marcus Drafts too, and myself too. So it was a lot more disciplined. By that time, Chris trusted me. Um, so I had my room where I was doing my own stuff and then he will come and check out all this stuff. But nowadays, then after that, with ghost stories and, uh, um, oh my God, I always forget that album. It's too long to type. Thank you. <laughs> That's full of dreams. And then this, the, the last one, you know, everyday life. So it's very much, I, I am in LA, for instance, and mm -hmm. it, I, I go to the studio and then maybe we do like a gig, a charity gig, and then can you try this, can you try that? So now I work sporadically almost all the time, mm -hmm. and then something will make it to the record and some team will make it. And it's like yeah. this with a lot of stuff. I mean, the amount of stuff that we record or try out, the, the amount of stuff that makes it to the record is just like a tiny percentage. But yeah. that's the way they work. It's a very luxurious way because mm -hmm. usually most of the project, I have a song and they 
you know, it's a much more, com- you know, it's a much straightforward, let's put it that way. So we, we experiment a lot. With, with, yeah. With yeah. And, th- and that's, you know, kind of <laughs> piggybacking off of that to another question is, you know, not only were you well involved from Viva to everyday life, but the way that the band changed with their, um, you know, maybe not just perception, but how they feel comfortable with you, you know, are they joking around more, are they, you know, you know, having more laughs or are they more serious in certain Actually, times? And- well, it's funny because uh, the first two records, Milo Zylotor and uh, Viva, that's when I spent the most time with the band. And that's when it was actually the most fun time. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, well, we were a lot younger and we were like uh, having, it was like a buzz and it was new thing. F- and I think one of the reasons why I kept my job with them is because I was kind of making them laugh a lot, <laughs> <laughs> which was kind of necessary, was kind of necessary at times because it was yeah. very, t- we can be, can be tense. And then I, I crack up a joke and then it's like, it's okay. <laughs> That's actually why I got. <laughs> I think, uh, but but no, just aside. I think nowadays I don't. I almost never see them. I, I almost only see him. It's um, and I, obviously now their, their sound has changed. I think in Viva there was a lot of strings, and obviously mm-hmm. Milo's Zylos there was a lot of strings, and then progressively, and they also have. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. My my stuff just died. Uh, this. So basically, the new from Ghost Stories has been pro- progressively less string and more like uh, electronics and more other yeah. production. And also, yeah. the, Chris has been working with uh, with another string arranger. It's really great, John uh, Metcalf, who's mm-hmm. a completely different type of writing. So they also wanted to try something different. So. I, I still work, I feel like things have just changed. I also myself work on a lot more projects, so I don't have the yeah. time that I had. Yeah. Do you know? So yeah. if I had to be like on the same basis as I was at the time of Viva La Vida back in the days, I mean, it would be, it's just counterproducing. Yeah. Uh, both for them and for myself. I think we, I, I, I don't know, you, I never take anything for granted because you never know, but um, I, I think we, we always work together in some kind of way. I yeah. think it, it's a nice, it's a nice relationship, you know, but yeah. who knows? you know, I haven't seen guys for years and then I saw him in Paris last, whenever it was July for one day, the day I went couple of days i was there to record for sunrise and church yeah. and all that kind of stuff and and that's it and then i see some i saw johnny at chris's birthday <laughs> 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 you know he said with the band he said will i never see him it's uh, i'm actually really sad because they are great guys i think i saw will when i play in san siro with them one gig i played mm-hmm. yeah uh, out of the box, you know. Yeah. Uh, at the stadium, and that's when I last saw him. I know. No, that's not true. They did this gig in London at the museum. On mm-hmm. yes. Yes, the Natural that's History when Museum. I saw yeah. them all in one room together. Right? Yeah, that that um, that kind of is another thing that I wanted to ask. Is you know, you go from the huge stadiums that they're playing, you know, um, Wembley Stadium or Rose Bowl or anything like that. And then they just go down to this small, well, intimate venue. I mean, the Natural History Museum is small. Well, it's still not there, very, you know, I mean, but, for for most bands, that would be a big gig. Yeah, honest. yeah. But oh, for yeah, them, yeah. it's like really small. Uh, they don't do that often. I think with this album especially, but the, sometimes where they do promo with Ghost Stories as well, mm-hmm. I think yeah. they they decide to do stuff which is unusual for yeah. them to bring also the audience a bit closer. Um, the What was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's it, really. <laughs> I don't think it changes much, to be honest with you. Yeah, because it's, it's still the band, you know? It's... Oh. They, it, it's, absolutely but it's funny because yeah. when i played with them in uh, san siro the stadium is like ninety thousand people right yeah 
two, yeah. two, two evening. And it's funny because I play one song like Viva and I just go for that song. And I'm in on stage and they are there, you know. And then it's like, it's like being in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> but there is like a lot of ads and things going yeah. with shouting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even because they, they, at that level with their stage, I just feel it's just home, you know. It, it really is funny, but they are masters in keeping that intimacy and connection. They're really good. That's why they are so. I think that's why they are so good. Yeah, and um, so we have another question here from Shreya. She asks, "What's your favorite song? Well, Coldplay song that either you've worked on or haven't worked on, or anything." Um, like that, or just favorite tune in general? Well, I don't know because I change my mind all the time. <laughs> well, I suppose on top of my head, there is a bunch of songs I didn't work uh, on that I would love to have uh, worked on. I mean, especially in the early period, it will be. Um, I really I remember when I first came out. I love Trouble. Yeah, yeah. And then I also love Fix You, mm -hmm. and the Scientist. Yeah. Kind of pre all this that I wasn't even in the in the picture by then. Stuff that I did, I think, um, I like. I suppose. Well, I the, the less known, like yes, I think it's really cool. Yeah. But I you know, like Viva, Paradise, and uh, I don't know, Sunrise, because it's just fresh. Yeah. And Birch, I love those two. But Viva and Paradise, they're kind of almost like classic. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah, I mean, those those tracks are just, I mean, not only are they just huge hits, but to be a part of, you know, like oh my gosh you're you're on you know viva libido one of their biggest tracks in the world everyone so when knows i go that sometimes song, i go and you know? see the show and then i see because you know they oh, well you know my parts are there recorded and then they yeah. play them through keyboards and so on and i it, and I, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of strange <laughs> to, <laughs> oh, that he that laughs you know yeah, 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 yeah. Hearing strings as loud as you know the it's drum kit, awesome. and bass, and it's awesome. At the same time, I'm kind of, I wish I was there doing it, <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's, it's okay. It's, it's fine, you know. Yeah, you know, but obviously, you know that it, it's that feeling of escape when you perform, especially I mean, in front of such a huge crowd compared to you know. If I mean, I have to say, I'm, a, I'm glad. That, I'm glad that I'm not doing the tour. Because you know it's not fun. It's uh, hard work. Yeah, yeah, and, and that that's yeah, that's a huge thing between a lot of people. Is you know, so many people say, "Oh, I want to be on the road. I want to tour. I want to go and tour the world." You know, like Coldplay does. And they, yeah, it's it's fun here and there, but it also is work. You know, you're going from this city to this city in you know eight hours, and you have it's to be gruesome. ready by the morning. It's really and, gruesome. Yeah. I mean, and they are, they are doing it in a very, very comfortable way, and it's still hard. Yeah. So it's never. You really need to love what you do. <laughs> if you yeah. Do <laughs> yeah. You really yeah. need. Yeah. I, I mean, I. I, I mean, it. To... It sounds like it's a bit like you know. Well, you know. You you come, you are sort of, complaining about luxury and mm -hmm. but it is kind of it's both it's both it's amazing and it's also really takes a lot at all yeah. oh so yeah it, i that's yeah, why I they mean, are really fit and they keep on fit mentally and physically because you know otherwise you just end up i don't know <laughs> who knows how the rolling stones managed to sing. yeah i mean that's the thing. So many bands, you know, they spend all that time together and then they just eventually they just start going after each other like, oh, this is because of you or this. So is, they developed, know, they, they, they definitely survived the period, which was obviously complicated for everybody, but they, they are really doing well. 
And, yeah. Oh, anyway. Yeah. So another question, which I'm sure you probably can't answer. Um, well, you can't, but Kermo asks, when's the next album coming out? Are you working on their next material? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask me? I never know. I never know. I mean, sometimes they tell me, I don't know. I don't know nothing. I know nothing <laughs> about that. No one knows, almost not even them now. Yeah. And you know, and it's, I think it's, I don't know, I just think it's just very early days. But yeah. I, that's, I have no idea. Yeah. And plus, now with the whole virus going around, it's probably going to be delayed a bit. I mean, with, you know, it's, it's tough work because they were working on material and then now they have to do it separately. But like you were saying, working separately sometimes is even better. I mean, it, can, yeah, exactly. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. I think, I think they have a, I think they even said it in a, sometimes I find out things from interview and then I think about it and think, yeah, that's right, that's how they work. I mean, I think they have a concept to start with and then they follow that and then, and then there's, but that's just me observing them from the outside. I do mm -hmm. my bit. Yeah. It's about it, really, I'm just a small, you know, I'm a tiny little <laughs> clog in the big, my yeah, shit, you know. <laughs> hey everyone, so David's phone actually ended up dying, um, but we got plenty of info for the interview, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I just want to thank David for allowing me to interview him in the first place. Got to talk about anything and everything there is about being a musician and working with Coldplay and his own solo work and all that. So, if you guys get the chance, definitely go and check out his social media. I'll link it down in the description. Um, and yeah, just want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.